I want to power my ESP32 project from this lithium ion battery. Um, I don't want to use a regulator because regulators take about six milliamps nominal current. Uh, so when the device is in sleep mode, it will, the regulator will still be taking six milliamps current. And at six milliamps current, this battery, even though it says 1200 milliamp hours, actually it's a very cheap one that I got from a from Poundland from one of the devices. I took it out of one of the devices and it only has about 700 milliamps of usable power. Uh, and with the regulator at six milliamps, um, it will last about five days if in standby mode. So I don't really want to use a, a regulator. So what I've done is I've got a diode in series here and the diode has about a 0.7 volt drop. Uh, and then I've got polyfuse because when you're using lithium ion batteries, you should always use uh, some kind of fuse because they can provide so much power that they are a, a fire risk if you don't use a, a fuse in series with them. I've got an LED in parallel with that polyfuse so that when the polyfuse um, is is effectively blown, uh, the LED will come on and I'll see um, if if I'm ever in that condition. Uh, but I shouldn't ever be in that condition, hopefully. Yeah, something bad will have happened if it ever blows that polyfuse. But if I short out the terminals here with this little uh, piece of metal, you can see that the... Um, There you, are. you can see that the the uh, LED lights up. So it shows an indicator. That's that's good to uh, to be able to see if that happens. Because if something fails, uh, then it's quick to check if the fuse is actually uh, blown. So because there's no voltage regulator in the circuit, it's possible to go over voltage on some of the components in the circuit. So the SP32, its maximum voltage before you damage it is 3.6 volts. And as the battery can be 4.2 volts when it's fully charged, it would definitely damage uh, the SP32. You also have to be careful of other components you want to uh, power up, like the SD card, the LCD display, and the touch sensor as well. Um, so if I look at the voltage on the battery at the minute, what I'll do is I'll go over the considerations to take into account uh, when using this method um, after I've done this demonstration. Let's see if I can measure the battery voltage as it is currently. So it's at 4 volts, 4.09 volts. Uh, so that would definitely damage the SP32 if I connected that directly now. But because the um, because the diode's in series, it should have a, about a 0.7 volt drop. Uh, because the diode's in series as well, it, it helped protect um, against batteries being put in the wrong way in the battery holder. But unless you've got a polarised connector for the power, which I don't have, you have to be very, very careful how you connect up the power to the circuit still. So if I connect this up and power up this, uh, my application and my application is running. Uh, so now if I look at the voltage uh, across, so the voltage coming out of there is, is what will be going into the circuit. Again trying not to obscure the meter. Uh, so the voltage going to the circuit is 3.28 volts which is ideal, uh, that's exactly what you want it to be. But like I say, what I'll do is I'll go over the considerations you have to take into account to ensure that you don't um, damage components of your circuit whilst you're doing this. So this is the circuit, you've got the ESP32 down here uh, and the negative side comes around there of the battery. And on the positive side of the battery, it goes through a polyfuse uh, and it goes through the Diode, the silicon diodes should give about 0.7 volt drop. Uh, need to check and make make sure that the diode you use does give the, the appropriate drop that you require. Uh, and then if the polyfuse effectively blows, so that becomes open circuit, then a small current can come around here and light the LED to indicate that the polyfuse has effectively blown. Uh, so I've got 1k resistor there, so it's probably about 3 milliamps goes through the um Diode. Some some diodes um, are really um, good at operating on point uh, on operating on about three millivolts milliamps. Sorry. Uh, so there's a few things to check. Uh, battery charges for lithium-ion batteries can sometimes charge over four point two volts. So you you want to make sure the battery charger you use doesn't overcharge the batteries. And in fact. 
you should use the, a battery charger in circuit in the actual circuit so that you don't accidentally use a different battery charger one day to charge up the batteries if it's in circuit then it can only ever charge up to the voltage that that particular battery charger charges uh, so that's the safety measure which which really needs to be implemented uh, and also check that the diode gives a 0.7 volt drop or whatever is appropriate for your circuit because um, some diodes uh, give a different drop voltage drop to other diodes so you need to double check that all, all of the components in the circuit operate as expected uh, and you need to ensure before the, you actually implement the circuit that you get the voltage you expect on the uh, for for whatever components you've got in the circuit. So, for example, the ESP32 mustn't exceed 3.6 volts, uh, and you want a safety margin in, in there as well because you don't want to accidentally get too close or over it, uh, as well as the other components that you might have in the circuit. And also, and so down here I've got the calculation. So, well, not much of a calculation, but. The battery voltage range for the lithium ion battery which I'm operating is 3.6 volts to 4.2 volts and with the 7.7 volt drop that gives me 2.9 volts to 3.5 volts of operating range and because it's 3.5 volts that's 0.1 volt underneath what the SP32 maximum voltage is so that gives me 0.1 volt uh, safety margin just in case something happens, um, something goes a bit over, over the top. Uh, but that's that's the problem with the, this particular circuit is that if anything does go wrong uh, then you're likely to blow a component so if you don't want to take that risk then don't use this circuit but um, I'll be using it on some of my projects uh, because it's because when the SB32 goes into deep sleep mode you don't want the regulator taking 6 milliamps because then you've got a circuit which lasts about uh, a week on a 1, one amp battery um, whereas if you go into deep sleep mode and you don't have a regulator, then you're in the microamps of current, and so it should you should be able to get a year's worth of battery use, probably several years worth of batteries in sleep mode. Um, obviously, when it comes out of sleep mode, then it's going to consume more. Uh, but in, you know, you should be able to leave the battery in the device for over a year and not have to worry about the charge rate if if it was fully charged at the start of that. 